Vaccines can prevent infectious diseases that once killed or harmed many infants, children, and adults. Without vaccines, your child is at risk for getting seriously ill and suffering pain, disability, and even death from diseases like measles and whooping cough. Vaccination is considered one of the most cost-effective ways of avoiding the spread of diseases. Currently, 2 to 3 million deaths a year are prevented by vaccinations, and a further 1.5 million could potentially be avoided if the global coverage of vaccines were to be improved. However, despite the overwhelming evidence available to us at our fingertips, we seem to be going backwards. The United States had more than 1,200 cases of measles in 2019. This was the greatest number of cases reported in the U.S. since 1992. To some degree, this is thought to be due to vaccines being a victim of their own success. Some countries now rarely see the deadly diseases which vaccines prevent, and so people may become more frightened of a perceived harm from a vaccine than the risk of the disease itself. In 2019, the WHO has named vaccine hesitancy as one of the world's top 10 global health threats. Vaccine hesitancy is defined as the reluctance or refusal to vaccinate despite the availability and access to vaccines, and it threatens to reverse any progress that has been been made over the years in tackling vaccine-preventable diseases. Today, we're going to take a look at what causes vaccine hesitancy and why people should not be scared of getting the recommended vaccines. First things first, you should know that vaccines are tested before they're recommended for use. Before a vaccine is ever recommended for use, it's tested in labs. This process can take several years. Regulatory agencies use the information from these tests to decide whether to test the vaccine with people. During a clinical trial, a vaccine is tested on people who volunteer to get vaccinated. Clinical trials start with 20 to 100 volunteers, but eventually include thousands of volunteers. These tests take several years and answer important questions like, is the vaccine safe? What dose or amount works best? How does the immune system react to it? Throughout the process, the regulatory agencies work closely with the company producing the vaccine to evaluate the vaccine's safety and effectiveness. All safety concerns must be addressed before a vaccine is licensed. Every batch of vaccines is tested for quality and safety. Once a vaccine is approved, it continues to be tested. The company that makes the vaccine tests batches to make sure the vaccine is potent, or it works like it's supposed to, pure, meaning certain ingredients used during production have been removed. Sterile, meaning it doesn't have any outside germs. The results of these tests are reviewed and the factories where the vaccine is made are rigorously inspected. This helps make sure the vaccines meet standards for both quality and safety. Vaccines are monitored after they're recommended to the public. Once a vaccine is licensed and recommended for use, regulatory agencies continue to monitor its safety. Now that we've solved the issue of safety, let's see how vaccines work. For that, we first need to understand what immunity is. Immunity is the body's way of preventing diseases. Children are born with an immune system composed of cells, glands, organs, and fluids located throughout the body. The immune system recognizes germs that enter the body as foreign invaders, called antigens, and produces proteins called antibodies to fight them. The first time a child is infected with a specific antigen, let's say measles virus, the immune system produces antibodies designed to fight it. This takes time. Usually, the immune system can't work fast enough to prevent the antigen from causing disease, so the child still gets sick. However, the immune system remembers that antigen. If it ever enters a body again, even after many years, the immune system can produce antibodies fast enough to keep it from causing disease a second time. This protection is called immunity. It would be nice if there were a way to give children immunity to a disease without their having to get sick first. In fact, there is. Vaccines contain the same antigens or parts of antigens that cause diseases. For example, measles vaccine contains measles virus, but the antigens in vaccines are either killed or weakened to the point that they don't cause disease. However, they are strong enough to make the immune system produce antibodies that lead to immunity. In other words, a vaccine is a safer substitute for a child's first exposure to a disease. The child gets protection without having to get sick. Through vaccination, children can develop immunity without suffering from the actual diseases that vaccines prevent. Just as with any existing medicine, vaccines can cause side effects. The most common side effects after vaccination are mild. They include pain, swelling, or redness where the shot was given, mild fever, chills, feeling tired, headache, muscle and joint aches. Serious side effects from vaccines are extremely rare. For example, if one million doses of a vaccine are given, one to two people may have a severe allergic reaction. If this does happen, it usually happens within minutes, and the person who vaccinates you or your child will be trained to deal with allergic reactions and treat them immediately. With prompt treatment, you or your child will make a good recovery. Although none of these severe symptoms resulted in permanent damage, they could be quite frightening to parents, but there is no reason for that. The side effects are just a sign that the body is starting to build immunity against a disease. Keep in mind that getting vaccinated is much safer than getting the diseases vaccines prevent. Overwhelming the immune system of the child is one issue that can cause parents to delay vaccination or refuse to get one at all, but they shouldn't because infant immune systems are stronger than you might think. They are exposed to hundreds of bacteria and viruses every day. Adding a few more with a vaccine doesn't add to what their immune systems are capable of handling. Receiving combination vaccines and or multiple vaccines at the same time is safe and offers protection against multiple diseases during one office visit. Giving several shots at the same time means fewer office visits. This saves you time and money and can be less traumatic for the child. Vaccines don't just work on an individual level, they protect entire populations. Once enough people are immunized, opportunities for an outbreak of disease become so low even people who aren't immunized benefit. Essentially, a bacteria or virus simply won't have enough eligible hosts to establish a foothold and will eventually die out entirely. This phenomenon 
phenomenon is called herd immunity, and it has allowed once devastating diseases to be eliminated entirely without needing to vaccinate every individual. This is critical because there will always be a tiny percentage of the population that cannot be vaccinated, including newborns, the elderly, people with severe allergies, or people with compromised immune systems. Thanks to herd immunity, these people are kept safe because diseases are never given a chance to spread through a population. Now, wait, what about autism? I'm pretty sure that you might have heard that vaccines can cause autism. The anti-vaccination movement got its first big booster shot in 1998 when Dr. Andrew Wakefield and 12 colleagues published a research in the Lancet Journal. Wakefield said his case studies had shown the measles, mumps, and rubella, or MMR, vaccine could be linked to a rise in autism cases in children. However, a number of faults were eventually uncovered in Wakefield's research. Among them was the small sample size of 12 people, as well as his ties to private companies. The Lancet retracted the study in 2010. That same year, the General Medical Council in the United Kingdom banned Wakefield from practicing medicine, citing a number of ethical lapses. Nonetheless, the hypothesis was taken seriously and several other major studies were conducted. High-quality studies over many years have compared the health of large numbers of vaccinated and unvaccinated children. Medical information from nearly 1.5 million children around the world have confirmed that vaccination does not cause autism. Immunizations can save your child's life. Medical advances in science mean that in this modern day and time, children can be protected against more serious diseases more than ever before. In fact, several diseases that have killed thousands before have now been completely eradicated, and many are close to extinction due to effective vaccines. An example of this is polio, which was once the U.S.'s most feared disease. But today, there are no reports of polio in the U.S. We live in a crowded, fast-moving world, and disease travels easily. If we stopped vaccinating, the diseases would start to come back. Aside from smallpox, all other diseases are still active in some part of the world. There would be epidemics just like there used to be. This happened in Japan in the 70s. They had a good vaccination program for whooping cough. Around 80% of Japanese children received a vaccination. In 1974, there were 393 cases of whooping cough and no deaths. Then, rumors began that the vaccine was unsafe and wasn't needed. By 1976, the vaccination rate was 10%. In 1979, there was a whooping cough epidemic, with more than 13,000 cases and 41 deaths. Soon after, vaccination rates improved and the number of cases went back down. Vaccination protects children from serious illness and complications of vaccine-preventable diseases which can include amputation of an arm or leg, paralysis of limbs, hearing loss, convulsions, brain damage, and even death.